We are on the bottom of Daf Samach Sain Amud Bet, and we're starting the seventh parak. Now, the article gives a little bit of an introduction here in terms of <coughs> we're talking about, um, since we're going to list all the milachot on Shabbat that we're not allowed to do, we'll distinguish between when a person is considered to be a mazid and when a person is considered to be a shogeg. Now, obviously, if the person was aware of the fact that it's Shabbat and was aware of the fact that what he's doing is, is not allowed and he had two people warning him that if he does it, he'll be subject to penalty and nonetheless he went ahead and did it, then clearly that person is a mazid and that's what uh, the baiting would be uh, allowed to, to deal with him. If, of course, he wasn't warned, then that would sort of be uh, a case where he's not uh, amazed that the baiting can act on him, but he's not a shogeg either, and therefore that's a case of karet that, uh, that uh, Kaddosh Baruch Hu will take care of him. So the question is, a person could be shogeg with reference to Shabbat in three different ways, and that's what our Mishnah tries to enumerate here. Okay, and so the Gemara will explain that the, the interpretation I'm giving you now is the one that we have to accept because there's no other possibility of explaining it uh, otherwise. So the, the Mishnah starts by Klal Gadol Amru Shabbat. They said a great rule with reference to Shabbat. Now the first part of the Gemara this morning will deal with why did we say Klal Gadol? What's the use of the term Gadol here? Uh, so the first one is kol shochiach ikar shabbat v'asam melachot arbe b'shabbatot arbe eno chayav el achatat echad. Now a chatat is brought for a mistake. So what the Gemara is, the Mishnah is going to be trying to uh, establish for us is depending on the on the nature of the mistake, quote unquote, we have to determine whether this is one mistake or many mistakes. So, as long as it's the same mistake, it's considered only to be one mistake. So, um, we're going to have to determine what the, the root cause that causes the mistake will determine how many mistakes we're dealing with, which will then determine how many chataot the person has to bring uh, in atonement. So we say that if someone isn't aware of the concept of Shabbat, that's how I'm translating it, because that's how the Gemara will explain it, and he did many melachot on many Shabbatot, he only has to bring one chatat, because his only mistake, quote-unquote, was that he doesn't even know there's a concept of Shabbat, right? Now, second case. Hayodea ikar Shabbat v'asam melachot arbe b'shabbatot arbe chayav al kol Shabbat b'shabbat. Now, in this case, the Gemara is going to explain that we're talking about someone who lost track of time. So let's say someone who's a traveler and he knows that there is Shabbat, but he, for whatever reason, believes that this, that, that the day um, that he, the, 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 the day with, that was actually Shabbat, that he was on, he thought was a weekday. And so on that day, he didn't keep Shabbat because he didn't think it was Shabbat. So then we say that his mistake then was in determining when it was Shabbat, and he'd be chayav for each and every Shabbat, but not for all the different things that he did because his mistake, quote unquote, was that he wasn't aware it was Shabbat. Finally, the obvious one, Ayodea Shu Shabbat, Vasamalachot Arbe, Beshabbatot Arbe, Chayav. I'll call Av Melacha Melacha. So the third one is that the person's aware that it's Shabbat, and he's aware, obviously, of the concept of Shabbat, oh, and he did many there. different things on that Shabbat, but he wasn't aware that those particular things were uh, things that are prohibited on Shabbat. So then you'd be Chayav, a Chatat for each and every Av Melacha, because his mistake in this case is the particular melacha that he did. So, and in brackets, the Gemara sort of Mishnah adds that if the person did a tolda and an av, so a tolda of the same av or many toladot uh, of a particular av, Milacha that he'd only be chayav once. In other words, it flows back to the av milacha, and it doesn't matter whether it's an av and a tolda or a many toldot. That would still only count as one mistake. 
Okay, so okay. let's move along a little brisker. Um, the Gemara in this first part is going to try and understand why we had to use the word Gadol in, in describing our situation. So, my Tamatana Klal Gadol, maybe, uh, why did he have to say that it's a Klal Gadol? Why didn't he just say Klal? So, Ile Mamishum de Kabai Lemitne Od Klal if you're going to say because what's coming up is another Mishnah which mentions the word Klal also, uh, so Tana Klal Gadol, uh, because the next Mishnah is going to, in that we're going to see with reference to Shabbat, is going to quote that we have another Klal uh, that's coming up uh, next week. So therefore, since ours is the first one, we say Klal Gadol to distinguish it from that other Mishnah. Um, and uh, so therefore he said Klal Gadol, Vigabi Shvi, Nami Mishum de Kabai Lamit Neod Klal Acher, Tana Klal Gadol. And by Shmita he also uses the term Klal Gadol, and then there's another mission that says Klal, so that might explain it. So he says, no, because I'll give you a situation where that happens and we don't say that one is Gadol and the other is just Klal. Bahaga Be Meiser Diktani Klal Acher, Velotani Klal. Gadol, because we see by Meiser, we say twice just that there's a Klal, and we don't say anything about Gadol. So just because there's two doesn't necessarily mean one has to be Gadol and the other not. So that can't be our reason. So there must be something that the word Gadol means, not just to distinction, uh, distinguish it from another one, but to make it more significant than the other one. So the Gemara explains that. Amar Rabbi Yossi Baravin, Shabbat Ushviti, Yit Avot Betoladot, Tana Gadol. So here's a second explanation. Um, since Shabbat and Shvit both have Avot and Toldot, with reference to the Melachot that are forbidden, so Tana Klal, Tana Gadol. Therefore he says Gadol. But Meiser delayed be Avot Betoldot, Lo Tana Klal Gadol. Uh, but Meiser that doesn't have any Avot and Toldot, there's no such concept, so therefore he doesn't need to say Gadol by one of them. Okay, so the Gemara asks right away, but it's not so simple, because Ulevar Kapara, Detani Klal Gadol, the Meiser, my Avot Toldot Ika, but Bar Kapara does suggest that one of the Mishnayot by Meiser does say Klal Gadol. And there is no concept of avot and toldot by Meiser, as we just explained. So therefore, it can't be that that's what's driving this. So, el alav hainutama. So then you must say that there's some real explanation um, uh, other than what we're trying to explain, some sort of... Um, uh, uh, some sort of uh, artificial explanation that we've given to that there must be some contextual uh, s uh, suggestion for why we're using the word gadol. So he explains this: Ella love hainu taima gadol on shol shabbat yoter michel shviit. That what he means is that he uses the term gadol in our mishnah to teach you that the uh, that the punishment with reference to Shabbat is greater than Shmita, and 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 that's obvious. Ilu Shabbat Ita, in the sense that it's more broader. The Ilu Shabbat Ita ben betalush ben bimchubar ve'ela shvit betalush leita bimchubar Ita. In other words, on Shabbat you have milachot even for produce that's been harvested before Shabbat. Now, of course, we know that you're not allowed to pick things on Shabbat, but even produce that's been harvested on Shabbat, say it can't be winnowed, it can't be threshed, it can't be produced into food. So those milachot um, exist even for something that's already on its way to being processed, where with reference to Shemitah, the Esau is only to work it while it's still attached to the ground. Once it's detached from the ground, the Esau uh, of doing something on behalf of the Shemitah produce goes away. And he says, furthermore, Vigadol on Shashashvit, your termina Meiser, you the Shvit, Ita ben Bemachal Adam, Be Bemachal Behema, Vilu Meiser, Bemachal Adam, Ita, Bemachal Behema Leita. 
So, and he explains, and then we use the term klal gadol by um, by shmita as opposed to meiser to teach you that shmita has a chumrah that meiser doesn't because shmita pr- uh, applies to produce across the board whether that's meant for human consumption or animal consumption whereas meiser is only an obligation we have for food that's for human consumption and not for animal consumption so the Gemara says okay very good but let's go back to the Indian of Bar Kapara for a second. With Bar Kapara, the Tani Klal Gadol by Meiser, um, why did Bar Kapara then say Klal Gadol by Meiser? So he must have something else in the chain here that is does not um, that is less severe than Meiser that we haven't mentioned yet. So he explains Gadol on Shoshel Meiser Yotel Michel Pea. Ilu meiser ita bete navierek, ilu pea leita bete navierek. So he says that the reason for that is that um, that the scope uh, of meiser uh, for transgressing meiser is greater than pea. Pea is taking the corner of one's field. Because meiser applies to uh, to te'enim, uh, which are figs and vegetables, and pea doesn't apply to figs and vegetables. So he ex- he um, so he shows that this is true. He'll show you. So first he starts with pea to show that those things don't apply. Ditnan klalam rube pea. We gave a general rule as to when pea applies. So. Koshu ochel, it has to be food, vinishmar, and it is preserved, vigidolomina arts, it grows from the ground, likitato kachad, and it's picked all at once, umachnisol kium, and when it's brought into the house, it can stay, it can stay fresh for a while. That's how I'm translating it, we'll see in a second. Chayev bepea, those things require pea. So now we explain each one of them. Ochel, the miute sviche stis vikotza. So, food comes to limit the growth from matter and woad. Now, we talked about matter the last couple of days. These things are used for dyes, they're not meant to be eaten. So, vinishmar. Um, and it's guarded, the mute hefker, or it's preserved, or it's guarded, means that if it's a field of hefker, it doesn't require peah, because it's not ownerless, nobody's guarding it. Um, and it grows from the ground, the mute kmenu patriot. So that would exclude truffles and mushrooms that, as far as the Gemara is concerned, they don't grow from the ground, they're fungi, they grow from the air. Um, Ulekita to kachad, and they're picked at once. Limute teina, to exclude figs, because if you've seen on a fig tree, figs trees have millions of figs on them, and some of the figs are perfectly ripe, and you can eat them, and other figs ripen later. That doesn't all ripen at once. Uh, so essentially, the fig tree is almost uh, ripening throughout the entire year, so it doesn't require pea. Umachniso lekiu. Uh, and when you bring it in the house, it stays preserved or it stays fresh to exclude vegetables, like say tomatoes go bad very, very quickly if you don't eat them right away, right? Or cucumbers, they'll, they'll go moldy. So, so we see by paya that it doesn't apply to, um, to uh, figs and vegetables. We look up a meiser tznan, but by meiser we'll see that when we define the chiyu for meiser, those two criteria don't exist. Klalam rube meiser. So what's our rule by meiser? Koshu ochel vinishmar vigirulo mina aretz. So we gave the the same rules as before, that it's food and that it's uh, guarded and that it grows from the ground. Chay be meiser. Those things require meiser. Veilu likatoka chad mechmisol kiyum lo tznan. But we didn't add the stipulations that it has to be something that's picked at once or that will stay preserved once you bring it in the house. So you see that Meiser has a greater scope uh, than uh, Pea. So that's why, according to uh, Bar Kapara, we would suggest that Klal Gadol 
b'meiser, b- but then he wouldn't need to use that term by peya. Okay, very good. So now the Gemara tries to explain the three scenarios that we gave into the Mishnah, okay? So that's why I went over the Mishnah again, because the Gemara is going to go through it in the process of elimination to show that the one scenario that we would suggest, the Mishnah can't be suggesting. Okay, so the Gemara says like this, Okay, so Rabbi Shmuel gave the following hypothesis. They're suggesting that the first scenario in the Mishnah, well, they, they said this rule, and we're going to read it into the first scenario in the Mishnah. They said the following rule. They said that when our Mishnah is talking uh-huh. about that you would only bring one chatat after many Shabbatot, after a lifetime of Shabbatot that you didn't keep Shabbat, would be only a child that was um, uh, that grew up or was taken captive by Goy. In other words, had no Jewish background, or a ger who converted amongst Goyim, so he had no one to teach him the proper laws. So that person was never aware of the concept of Shabbat. They had no background in Shabbat. But if someone at one point had learned about Shabbat and then went off the path, then that person would be chayav for each and every Shabbat because they do have the knowledge of Shabbat, right? So now let's try and see if that's if we can read that into our Mishnah. So, the, the, so we quote the Mishnah. It's none. Hashocheach ikar Shabbat. We said that someone forgot the concept of Shabbat, he only brings one chatat. So, lav michlal de havyele yidiya mikara. But we said, hashocheach ikar Shabbat, someone who forgot the concept of Shabbat. So, doesn't that mean that at one point he was aware of Shabbat? Um, so, then how are you suggesting that it that someone would only bring one chatat if they were never aware of Shabbat, but someone who at one point was aware of Shabbat would bring for each Shabbat when we said specifically in the Mishnah that he forgot the concept of Shabbat, which seems to be mashma that he was aware of it at one point and just now at this point in life is not aware of it. So the Gemara says, no, no, don't think of it that way. Lo, my kola shocheach ikar Shabbat, daita shachuach mimenu ikara shal Shabbat. What we mean by someone who forgot the concept of Shabbat means that he had no knowledge of it, period. He's never been aware of that knowledge of Shabbat. Meaning in the sense not that he forgot it was Shabbat, it's more like he was unaware of the concept of Shabbat. That's how we understand it. Aval hikir So the Gemara pushes back. Okay. So what happens in a case where he was once aware of Shabbat and then lo- uh, completely lost track of the concept in his mind. What if someone was once aware of Shabbat and now he doesn't remember the, uh, the concept of Shabbat? My, so what happens in his case? Chayaval kol Shabbat v'Shabbat. He then has to bring a korban for every Shabbat because he was aware of the concept of Shabbat at one point in <coughs> life. So then let me ask you a question. Aditani, so then why did you say in the middle clause of the Mishnah, in the second scenario, Hayodea ikar Shabbat, vasamelachot arbe b'shabbatot arbe, chayav al kol Shabbat b'shabbat. You said in the middle case that the person's aware of the concept of Shabbat, and he did many melachot and many shabbatot. He's only chayav for each Shabbat and Shabbat, which we explain as someone who lost track of the fact of what day of the week it was, right? But he's aware of the concept of Shabbat. If what you're saying is true, that then litne he kir levasof shachach. If what you're saying is true, that if someone was once aware of the concept of Shabbat and now he's no longer aware of that then you should have given that as the second scenario as to where you would be higher for each and every Shabbat because you're saying that at one point in your life you were aware of it and now you're not aware of it so then you'd be higher for each and every Shabbat 
the Kol Shekenhan, all the more so a person who's aware of the concept of Shabbat and just lost track of time. So like your middle case scenario doesn't make sense because you've left out the more obvious scenario. So the Gemara says, pushes back. What is like a fourth case? In other words. Yeah, in other words, the, that middle case of someone who was once aware of Shabbat and now is gone back packing to the Himalayas for the rest of his life and <coughs> over time forgot all about Judaism, the, that case doesn't seem to be here anymore, right? It seems to be missing because that would be the more obvious middle scenario. So the Gemara pushes back, Maya Yodea Ikar Shabbat, Mishaya Yodea Ikar Shabbat Vishachacha. So he says, um, Yes, um, I agree with you, and, and in fact, we can interpret the middle case of the Mishnah to mean that. The middle case of the mi Mishnah means when it says someone was aware of the concept of Shabbat, we don't mean that he's aware of the concept of Shabbat now, we mean that he was aware of the concept of Shabbat, and now at this point in his life he, he's forgotten about the concept of Shabbat. Uh, but it doesn't mean that he was aware of the concept of Shabbat necessarily when he transgressed. So, uh, so, the, so the Gemara pushes back. Okay, so then what happens about lo shachacha um, mai? Then what happens in our scenario where the guy's traveling in the desert, where he is aware of the concept of Shabbat, but he's not aware that it's Shabbat, right? Uh, so chayav al kol melacha o melacha. Then you would have to say, uh, are you going to tell me then? that that person is going to be chayav for every melacha if he's aware of the concept of Shabbat but he doesn't realize that today is Shabbat so the third scenario you gave me was Adetani, the last cause in the Mishnah was Hayodea Shu Shabbat Ve'asa melacho tarbei b'shabbatot tarbei chayav al kol melacha o melacha you said that someone who knows it's Shabbat and he did many melachot on many Shabbatot that he'd be chayav for every in uh, each melacha. So then, tell me this case: litne yodei kar Shabbat the koshkenha. Then you should have quoted me. The more novel case would be to suggest that the person is aware of Shabbat, just he doesn't know today is Shabbat, and he's chayav. So all the more so where the person's aware of Shabbat and aware that today is Shabbat, that he'd be chayav for all of the things that he did. Right? So. So therefore, and, and that, so, so now you, you're stuck because the Mishnah didn't give four cases, it only gave three cases. So then there can only be three scenarios here, there can't be four. Because the way the Mishnah laid it out, it didn't lay it out according to your understanding of, of four situations, then because the three first ones, one, two, and three, are out of order. We seem to be one, two, and four now. So, so something isn't right here. So he says, so we have to go back to the way we explained it initially. Ella matnitin kishi hikir ule sof shachach. So then you have to say that the first case of our Mishnah could even be including a case where someone was once aware that it was Shabbat and now is no longer aware that it's Shabbat. They've somehow uh, disappeared off the radar screen of their Judaism, they don't even realize that there's a concept of Shabbat anymore. Udu Rabu Shmuel, and the situation that Rabu Shmuel mentioned, Nami ki kir lasof shachach dami. And if you think about it, the cases that Rabu Shmuel gave were someone who was taken captive amongst the Goyim, or someone who became a ger amongst Goyim, <coughs> is, is essentially the same thing. It's as if the person was aware and and then at some point later no longer had that awareness. Um, uh, so uh, in in other words it's treated the same. We're not saying that it's that it's in reality it's the same. We're just saying that practically speaking it's the same. So if someone was aware of their Judaism as a baby or as a small child or something and then disappeared off the Judaism scale and lost track of the whole concept, it's no different than someone who never really had that awareness if you stop to think about it. Vahachi um, itmar Rabu Shmuel. And this is what Rabu Shmuel is saying. De Amri Travayo, they said, Afilu tinoch shenishba ben anochim, yigir shenit goyer ben anochim, kishik here, 
Nu le sof shachach dami v'chayev. And the novelty in their um, explanation is that even in a situation where there was never any awareness of Shabbat in their life because they were taken captive or became a gear in an environment where no one could explain the concepts to them, that there's still uh, a chiyuv once they uh, obtain that awareness. Because you might have thought that maybe there's a possibility that they shouldn't be chay of anything because they never had any knowledge whatsoever of Shabbat. So that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying that practically speaking, halakhically <coughs> speaking, that if someone was aware of Shabbat and completely for lost track of the concept or was never aware of it, it it's on the same thing and their one error quote unquote so to speak is their lack of knowledge of Shabbat and then once they're aware of that they would bring one chatat for all of the things that they did over their lifetime because their only error quote unquote is the fact that they were not aware of Shabbat right, so that is the right so and that's their chiddish right their chiddish is that they agree that if someone had awareness of Shabbat at one time and forgot about it, that they would be chayav to one chatat. The novelty is even if they never had that awareness, they'd be chayav to one chatat. Okay, so now, um, the Gemara, though, will show that, no, this isn't the only way to explain this. Uh, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Damri Trevayu Davka, he kir l'so shachach. They would hold, Rabbi Yochanan and, and Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish in Eretz Yisrael, hold the Davka, it's someone who was aware of the concept of Shabbat and then lost track of it over their lifetime. They would hold that if someone never had the awareness of Shabbat in their entire lifetime and it suddenly became aware of it, that they wouldn't be high of it anything, because in this case, what mistake or error they've made. They never had the background to to make a mistake or an error. Okay. So now the Gemara is going to try and push back from the following Brita. Meitve. So this Brita parallels a little bit of our Mishnah. Meitve. Klal Gadol and Ruba Shabbat. Kol HaShocheach Ikar Shabbat Vasa Melachot Arbe B'Shabbatot Arbe Eino Chayav El Ela Echad so the the first rule is the same one that we saw. Someone who was unaware of the principle of Shabbat would only bring one chatat. So ketzad. So how did they define that? Tinok shenishpa ben anochrim u'vigir shenitgayer ben anochrim. So if you add a child that was taken captive or a ger that became a ger amongst goyim, v'asam elachot arbe b'shabbatot arbe ino chayav ela chatat echad. And if later on this person were to discover the, the basic concept of Judaism, then he'd be chayav for once for Shabbat, and once for having eaten dam his whole life, and once for having eaten forbidden fats his whole life, and once for having performed Avodah Zarah his whole life. But um, you see clearly that uh, that this that the the first author of this brayta, the first opinion of this brayta, holds that there is a chiyuv, even if you had no unaware, uh, awareness ever in your life before someone brought it to your attention. Un munbaz poter, but munbaz says the person is exempt, like we just saw Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish suggests because he was never aware. So you can't say that he had made an error because what error could he make if he was never aware? Uh, and that's what Moonbuzz argued in front of Rabbi Akiva. We'll see that he's going to learn from Sukim here now how he defines a shogek. So he says, since a person who does a sin uh, purposefully it is called the chote, v'shoged karui chote, and a person who does a sin inadvertently is called a sinner. So ma mezid chaya lo yidia. A mezid obviously has to be someone who has knowledge that what they're doing is wrong. So af shoged chaya lo yidia. So then the shoged has to have some knowledge that what he's doing is wrong, only he erroneously did it. But if this person never had the background to know that what they were doing is wrong, so then how can they be considered to be a sinner? Amarlo Rabbi Akiva, 
Rabbi Akiva said back to him, um, I could extend your argument a step further and show you that it that, that, that doesn't hold water. Hareni mosif al dvarecha. Let me, let's take it to its logical conclusion. Ima mezi chaita maise. So then, uh, if you're saying a mezi to someone who had this knowledge that it's wrong at the time that he did it, so af shogeg chaita lo yediyabishat maise. So then the shogeg also has to be someone who had the knowledge that it was wrong at the time that he was doing it. So then what's the difference between a mezid and a shogeg, right? So if you're saying that they're both the same, then at some point they can't be the same. They have to diverge in some aspect. So Amar Lohain, he says, so Munba said to him, uh, I agree with you. In fact, I don't see what's illogical about the argument. I think it is logical. The Kolshikin Shosafta, you just added to what I was just saying. So uh, um, I was, we'll see in a second what Moonbuzz is saying. Amar lo litvarecha in ze karui shogege lemezi. So Rabbi Akiva said back to him, but then what you're saying is there's, there's no way to draw a line between a shogeg and a mezid, right? So, Ktani Mia, okay, but what we get out of this is Ketzad, um, what we got out of this uh, is Ketzad Tinok. So, we got the point that was mentioned in this Brita was about the child that was taken captive. Bishlam ala Rabu Shmuel Nicha. So, then that would fit according to Rabu Shmuel's understanding. That uh, that in that case you be chayav one chatat for uh, finding out later in your life that there is a concept of Shabbat. But how would Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish understand it? Because they uh, seem to suggest that there's no chiyuv. So Amri Lach Rabbi Yochanan and Reish Lakish lo mi ika moonbuzz de patar. Didn't moonbuzz say specifically here that? Uh, that uh, that there's no chiyu ananda rina kimunba. So we follow Moonbuzz's approach. Okay, so now let's try and just dissect this a little bit. The Gemara is going to get an understanding of how do we understand Moonbuzz? Okay, how does he distinguish between a mezid and a shogeg? So my tamadu Moonbuzz. How does Moonbuzz argue? Um, uh, that the person it isn't going to be high of it all if he never had any background, that he doesn't meet the definition of a shogeg. So, Dichtiv, it says, Torah chat yelachem lo sebishkaga. There's one law for everybody who does something inadvertently. The Samech in the very next pasuk says, Vanefesh asheta sebiad rama, that someone who does it deliberately. So he ki shogig lemezit. So then the Torah seems to be linking them somehow. Ma mezit shaitalu yidia. The mezit person obviously had to have knowledge. Shoaf shogig shaitalu yidia. So then the inadvertent person also had to have knowledge. Okay, so that's why Moonbuzz explains that the person never was familiar with the concept that he can't be considered to be a shogig. Rabbanan. So what do the Rabbanan do with that pasuk? Because obviously they don't learn it the same way as Moonbuzz. Hai Torah chat mayavdile. How did they? Understand the two psukim being together. So we buy a lay lead to me, carry lay Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi libre. They need it the way Rabbi Yeshua explained to his son. Torah chat yelachem lo sebish gaga. When the Torah says there's one law for you, for someone who does it inadvertently, uchtiv, and it also says, vechi tishku velota su et kolamitzvota ele, and it also says, that when you make a mistake and you don't follow the mitzvot, uh, which is referring to uh, Avodah Zarah, by the way, Uchtiv, and then it says, Vanefesh asher taseh biyad ramah, that someone who does it purposefully, hukshu kulam l'avodah zarah. So the Rabbanan bring in this other pasuk and say that it all is similar to uh, Avodah Zarah, like this. In other words, they learn when... Um, like this. <coughs> when do we have a situation where uh, someone will bring a korban chatat that they did it in inadvertently? It's if you did it purposefully, you'd be chayav karet. 
So af kal davar shachayavim as dunah karet vashi goto chatat. So this whole concept that you're punished if you're mazid and you bring a korban chatat as a shogeg is only if the mazid would attract the penalty of karet. That's how they link the psukim together. So now the Gemara, uh, I'm just going to do a couple more lines so we finish with Moonbaz. Ve'ela Moonbaz shkaga b'mai. So according to Moonbaz, what's his mistake? Moon, if Moonbaz says that the Torah is linking both a mazid and a shogeg to suggest that he had awareness of the, what he was doing was wrong, so then what is his mistake? What is his, uh, first of all, how do you consider him to be a shogeg, inadvertent, and what exactly was his mistake? So he says, Kigon Shagag B'Korban. What his <coughs> mistake was, quote unquote, according to Moonbaz, is that he didn't realize that if he was a shogeg, that he would have to bring a Korban Fata. <coughs> So the Rabbanan stay back to him. Rabbanan, shiga korban lo shma shkaga. The Rabbanan say that, that there's, there's your paradox. In other words, you're saying that uh, <coughs> sin is done inadvertently, knowing that it's wrong, but not realizing what the implication of that would be. But then, if you're saying that the person who does it b'mezi knows that it's wrong, and the person knows that he's doing it in shogeg, quote unquote, knows that it's wrong, then what's the distinction between shogeg and mezi? In both cases, the person knows that the particular act is wrong, so then that's no distinction between shogeg and mezi. If the person knows that he's doing what he's doing is wrong, then you can't call that shogeg. So then just because he doesn't know what the implication is in terms of the Corbin, that doesn't make him a shogeg, because what's his error? His error is he doesn't know the implication, but that's not an error in what he's doing. So the Rabbanan hold that the shogeg means that there's something about what you're doing that you have a, a lack of awareness about, or that you make a mistake about, or you make a wrong assumption about. So that they disagree with Moonbuzz that that, that, is, that would be grounds for considering shogeg. They don't consider that to be shogeg.